the more I think about um, Easter Island Ape, it's like a book that I want to write. It's a story of our ancestors who grew up on a peninsula off um, the eastern, northern eastern Africa, where um, basically 10 million years ago, it was a peninsula that over the course of millions of years, maybe it was 20 million years ago, as the ice ages were in, um, in Europe, water levels were over, you know, 300 feet lower. And um, our ancestors, which were kind of monkey, we weren't, we were like the, the ancestors of monkeys too, um, lived there. And what happened was, over a um, million years, water, as the ice ages melted, these, this peninsula actually became um, islands, right? An island chain. And a really neat thing happened was that, um, as you know, cats and game and our biggest predator on the land really, um, you know, weren't there as a, as a threat. So, as a species, we thrived on this island with very few predators. Um, and what happened was over time, we basically ate all the fruit as, because we're very good at, at adapting. And maybe the island as we grew up in population, we had little clans. If you like watching the, the series on um, um, Discovery Channel about those little monkeys that have little tribal monkeys, they fight each other and everything else. And probably these tribes grew up and um, probably one tribe, because it was an island, couldn't run away and they were smaller and as the, as the water rose, the islands over a million years got smaller and smaller. You got to think of the time scale here to a point where basically, you know, one of the tribes had started adapting or probably was one of the tribes that lost their fig tree and were forced off and they had nowhere to go and they were starving and they were desperate and everything else. And our ancestors basically started scavenging on the beach and, you know, and so hungry they saw this shell thing and it was moving and it's whatever moves you can possibly eat because we eat insects and stuff. We've known that and bugs and grubs and everything else if you look at the meerkats. And so what happened was we started, you know, basically taking these mollusks and stuff, using our stones to break them off and eating kind of salty and disgusting but when you're hungry when you're starving and you've got nothing else to eat I tell you what and I've been there those little limpets on the side of the ocean that's been there for you know tens of billions you know, millions of years taste damn good right and you know what an interesting thing is that with the with the change of protein to our diet actually was a great asset to our brain so we was like hmm if this if we can eat this we started scour scavenging around. We tried some raw crab and and so on and different things. And then all of a sudden we saw these little fish and sometimes it would wash up on shore and sometimes we would be able to, you know, catch them in the ponds. And we were clever little, little you know, proto-apes. And, um, you know, over time we adapted. And you know what, we were kind of left alone because all the other, you know, our ancestors was like, these, ugh, they're beach feeders. It doesn't get any lower than a beach feeder. I mean, you're forced to living on the beach of an island. That's pretty damn bad, right? But it had its assets in the sense that over time we were able to actually develop. And what happened was we spent more time in the water. We started, you know, hunting. We got probably grabbed the octopus, and that was an interesting one. It was the first time. So, you know, Easter Island Ape is all about our ancestors and how we grew up kind of like a mere species of um, you know pre monkey um, ancestor to basically homo sapien over 10 million years this one little species and we know that radical evolution happens on islands we know that you know I don't know if you know but a kind of um, crow is the bird is the ancestor of the birds of paradise a crow a crow is an ancestor bird of paradise um so radical adaptation happens on islands and it makes to me it makes it, it makes a lot of sense to me thinking about it and i could i could see this happening um occurring um and think about it the helplessness of our children what would we do
we would just, you know, stick him on the beach and dig a little bit of a hole and put up a branch to cover his, you know, cover our child and he'd lay on his back as the mother would be fed. The mother, the, the child would, would not want to be on the mother feeding because the mother would be in the water swimming and stuff and, you know, it's a good way to drown your, your, your infant. So we, did, we adapted where we didn't need and the hair obviously becomes a, a burden to, um, to swimming and everything else. So over a million years we started adapting. So one of the things that's always puzzled me too is like why is there so many different hominoid species? Well, the answer to me is pretty obvious because there would have been a chain of these islands and a number of things would have happened. One is as we again grew and we were successful, basically beach space would have become a would have become a, the uh, the real uh, commodity and as there's only so much beach and basically as men grow up and just as you watch the meerkats they break away as beach sta space disappears the weaker tribes would have been forced off and obviously by this time after millions of years of you know like five million years of becoming you know basically um, island apes um, sustaining ourselves off the beach Basically, the only option of family would be swim to another beach or anything else. And eventually, what probably happened, especially the early ones, number two, one is forced off by competitors, um, and they swam to the the big island, um, or B, they, um, you know, over time they were forced off the island because of the habit, the um, global warming and, and the island ultimately disappearing. So, you know, a number of scenarios could have happened, but. You know, Easter Island Ape is really a story of Atlantis in a way. You know, it, it's funny because you can look at that island as Atlantis, as a very, is our, you know, is basically taking the idea of Atlantis to its primordial stage, right? So Atlantis isn't really a symbol of, it's a symbol of our birth, really not for a symbol of a culture. Um, and that culture, just that, that the whole culture side of it really just came about with, with human imagination and everything else. So, um, that's just my, you know, Easter Island ape idea that I would love to, uh, you know, if I had the ability to write a book and, um, well, probably I do, but there's so much that I have to do that I'd rather just do a talk on it and, uh, and instead of writing, talk about it. So that's a summation or an overview of the book and maybe I'll do like different chapters and little stories if you'd like to hear it and maybe talk about the characters and do a series of little talks about Easter Island Day and how species origin of man really came out of you know um, living on an island that forced us to be semi-aquatic that evolved us into the physical features that we have now and the adaptation um, and everything else um, to um, you know providing the explanation reasons why there's so many different hominoids or just earlier version of us leaving the island right at different earlier stages and adapting on the mainland because we were we had the skill another reason why you know why the the earliest Y chromosome man is found actually on an island off the coast of Africa through the journey of man you could watch that documentary series and another reason why really if you think about again from the journey of man why man basically expanded by following the shorelands because we could always survive on the shore um, you know living on the shore meant we had really much the you know food um, that we needed we knew how to hunt the evolution of the spear really the spear that you know that really became the super weapon right the sling spear would have been a great adaptation for fishing and hunting you know if I'm trying to you know uh, hit a distance at a you know like a large fish at a distance the accuracy that we would develop the um, um, you know the, uh, the the thinness of the shaft would have been perfect for actually using to um, for hunting fish um, not necessarily it doesn't make sense for really developing for game but more so but then becoming adapted maybe the first thing was a spear and then the sling was the adaptation for the lane you know the the, the the pitching device interesting things to consider and to you know so Easter Island ape is something what I believe in and it's that day and it's not new I'm taking I'm building on basically Elaine's thoughts thoughts and stories and, and imaginations and and I think there's something to it because we all know Easter Island happened and what would have happened if it would have happened in a, just the right place